Welcome to the Benson Hammond House. Today we will be baking a pie from Mrs. Rower's cookbook. For today's pie, we will need three large green apples, one quarter cup of sugar, two tablespoons of water, a tablespoon of butter, a little flour to help thicken the syrup, cinnamon for flavor, and a fresh pie crust. You can choose one that is pre-made. Today I am just making a very basic apple pie, and the recipe I am using is from Mrs. Rohrer's Philadelphia Cookbook. And this cookbook uh, was written in 1882, and Mrs. Rohrer had one of the first cooking schools in the United States. She's one of the ones who standardized the recipes, the standardized ingredients and sizes, what we would add to it, and you'll see, again, she's got specific measurements that I'll use. And she was also considered the first dietitian in the United States. So this is um, when home economics is coming about. We say economics now, they said economies, home economies. And they were standardizing and teaching women how to cook because we're also at a point of a lot of movement in our country. And so we didn't have our mothers nearby. We didn't have our grandmothers or our aunts help us remember how to cook, how to check this, what is the new style. And so cookbooks like this became very popular. Home manuals were very popular in the 1880s, 1890s. So I don't have a copy to share with you, but I'm happy to read that, read it out. And so what Mrs. Rohr is going to have us do is we have, she calls for three green apples or other tart apples. I have five very small apples. So instead of her three large, we're going to use five small. A quarter of a cup of sugar, two tablespoons of water, and one tablespoon of butter. And Jen, actually, I didn't grab some water. If you sure. Need a moment. I Thank will. And so we're going to just do up some apples and follow her recipe. She's also going to have us add some cinnamon. And cinnamon, again, is a sweet spice. Um, today, very often, we will pick up our friend Apple Pie Spice. <laughs> cheetah! <laughs> yes, cheetah! I have all the spices and all of these things in my cupboard. I have two prepared ones that I will buy from the store. The rest I will mix up on my own. But I keep Apple Pie Spice and Pumpkin Pie Spice yeah. on hand. Because you can use them in anything. Right, right. Great. So I keep those on hand. Keep those with us. more than this? That's perfect. Because I'm only going to need two tablespoons of oh, it. And I'm very good at the answering of questions. Sometimes I start rambling and sometimes I get stuck. So if you have questions, please uh, let me know. But what we're going to do first, I had thought about making a pie crust. And uh, there are two reasons why I did not make a pie crust today. One is the uh, time that we have and the logistics of doing that. So I brought a pre-made crust for us today. The other reason that I did not make a, uh, make a pie crust for us today is I can make pretty much anything. I can't make pie crust. <laughs> she loves oh, that I can do it. You can't, surprisingly. She's, there you go. She's Next. my homemaker and I'm, I'm not. <laughs> I, soups and pies were always my thing. I can do a soup. I cannot do a pie crust. Pie crust is very basic uh, pastry, and you want to handle it, um, you want it cold, you want cold butter or cold fat. Lard was a traditional, um, a traditional fat that you would use. Butter is a traditional fat that you would use. And you, very often now we will use um, a coconut oil or Crisco. And I know a lot of people have been raised on using Crisco and other shortenings such as that. Mm -hmm. And uh, those are also very good choices. Pie crust, you want to work as little as possible. It is flour and your fat and um, sometimes a little bit of water. I have heard some people will add vodka instead of water. And the reason, vodka. vodka. Oh, vodka. Vodka. Oh. I can't say that word. Um, hmm. I prefer rum, but I haven't used it in pie crust. <laughs> so I'm just unrolling our little pie crust friend here. And I have with me one of my antique pie plates. 
and this one um, at Paul's Pies with a deposit. Hmm. So and it has the holes. <laughs> and it has the holes so that the crust stays nice and, and crispy. Um, very often in cities you could subscribe for pies. You could pick up a pie on a uh, you know at the store and just like milk bottles you had a deposited returnable tin. Oh. Okay. So you might pick this up at the grocery store. Now the grocery is really the corner market and so you might have Paul's pies, but Paul may also be baking the bread that is being sold there too. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I've also seen some pie plates that will say Sears, and they would have come with all oh, the yeah. stoves. Yeah, I remember this one. They had old dishes. And right in front of you, I have a pie plate. You can take a look at that. That is one of our antique pie plates, and it's actually one of the items from our antique store. Um, but I find that it's very helpful in as, uh, showing some of these things. And what I like about that particular one is it has the little arm on it that will sweep around and loosen the pie from the, from the pie plate. So I'm just pressing our pie crust oh, okay. into our lovely little pie plate. I find it interesting that it has that little arm. You know, we think we're modern, and that would be a new That's thing. how I remember it. Yeah. But it's, it's an old thing. Mm. I'm, I'm from um, downtown Brooklyn, and you, you know how they've changed everything, but it was a factory there when I was little, and when they were closing it out, they had a bunch of dishes, and a uh, um, family friend would let us go in there sometimes and get dishes, but I remember these were old pans back then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know what year, maybe it was in the 70s or mm -hmm. something, you know. Well, in the 70s, an old pan that's only 40 years old goes back to the 1930s. Oh, right, yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it, it was really, it, it was old, but yeah. it probably was ancient. <laughs> oh, you yeah. know. Yeah. It, it may have been. Right, yeah. So I'm going to take some time and peel up some apples. What I, have, like <laughs> what I have um, is a cast iron uh, reproduction, but it's in when I say it's a reproduction, it's because this style is so effective that it's still being made and used. Yeah. So while it falls into the, under that case, it's not really a reproduction. This is um, one of the times that we can see that we made something that's so good that we're just continuing to use it as it is. So this may be very similar to what um, your mother or your grandmother may have had. And so we're just going to peel up some apples. And if anyone would like to try, you're welcome to come over and... Oh, that's that thing. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, is that one of those things like Tupperware? Somebody used to sell something on the, the first time I saw that. Interesting. So. Yeah, it's not Tupperware. It's another company mm -hmm. that sells gadgets. Right. Mm -hmm. and my girlfriend, she brought one. And the thing now is you take the apple peels right. mm -hmm. and put it in jello. Oh, the really? powder mix. Okay. The jello, something, oh. something uh -huh. like that. And this is it's tasty. Mm -hmm. Karen just made some jelly from apple peels. Oh, really? Yes. Mm -hmm. You wow. can take, now these apple peels will probably not become jelly. But you can save the apple peels from pies or making um, applesauce. Simmer them for a little bit. Yeah, really? Strain okay. it off. Yes. When she made her um, apple jelly yes, last week mm -hmm. here, oh. and we got to eat the little bit out of the bottom of it, mm -hmm. I was like, how long have it? Yeah. And it was so good. <laughs> it was so good. And mm -hmm. I, next day I said, all I need are some nice... Hot fresh biscuits. Oh, oh yeah, and some carrot apple jelly, and I would have been happy. Mm -hmm. uh, hot fresh biscuits. That yeah. Is, that that might be next year's mm -hmm. presentation. <laughs> we may do biscuits next year. Now, normally when I'm dressed, I have my hair up in a bun, so I'm being very cautious. Where it uh, ends up right now, so please understand that. <laughs> I usually have it up, but um, we. No, are, I was just saying she got some long hair. <laughs> We are going to be uh, working on the house and decorating uh, later today. So that thing has been around forever. This style has been around forever, yes. Wow. Um, this particular one is a recent acquisition. Wow. 
That is cool. Easy that to is really neat. Oh, yeah. 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 If it was not for this little device, we probably wouldn't be making the pie today. Because <laughs> nobody wants to sit and you yes, see me sit and something like uh, Tupperware that sells and then it hooks on to the counter or something. Hmm. Wow. And it slices mm -hmm. it too? Are you it too? Yes. Oh my goodness. Do you have one of those? Mm -hmm. I just oh. used mine the other day to make applesauce. Wow. Mm. So this particular apple has decided to be difficult. Can you imagine that? That was so easy. It is wonderful. Can you use that bottle or is the camera not going to be blocked? But the water bottle? Wait, oh, the water bottle? Yeah, I don't think it's going to be blocking that. That's fine. I can get my camera there. So we're just pull our apples out and throw our peels in. So I'm also very good at the telling more than the showing. So what questions would I what uh, would you be interested in hearing about? Are those Granny Smiths the best? Your favorite pie apples? Granny Smiths are one of my favorites. Yes, um, Granny Smiths. For some reason, this apple doesn't want to be happy. Granny Smiths are um, a tart apple. So when you are... Um, are you okay? Yeah, I think so. But could you get me uh, two wet towels, please? I'm going to wash this down before I continue. Mm -hmm. I, I cannot continue. I, uh, I'm going to have to drop the, the razor. Mm -hmm. um, my blade is damaged. Oh. oh. And is that what they use? Oh, it's a blade on it. Yes. yes. And then, um, actually, I got the blade. It won't, the apple uh, will peel now, but it won't slice. So, and actually, I may need your help to slice things. I'm not in a position to slice any longer. <laughs> this is the first time this has happened during a presentation. Mm. Okay. That, that will peel the apple now, but it won't slice it. There we go. Tag it. Wow. And uh, why don't you set that one to the side? It doesn't core it either. Yeah, that's that took the core down because um, it's damaged. Before you continue, before you continue, if you could just wipe the sides. And like I said, the one you just did, we're going to set to the side for now. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. That's all right. So this is Deb. She is one of our, also one of our docents and a good friend of mine, good friend of ours. And like I said, that, yeah, just wipe that and we'll make mm -hmm. sure that uh, it's prepared. And so it just slides up and we stab that apple and we go from there. Mm -hmm. And I'm just with my other hand. It will peel a potato. You can make shoestring potatoes with it. Um, it's got a lot of really great uh, uses. Hey, shoestring potatoes. Do they still eat potatoes? those? <laughs> we do. We do. Wow. Uh, shoestring potatoes are. are you know, we can do that. You can also um, spiralize some uh, squashes. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yes, Sharon. Yes. Oh, oh, thank you. I, I appreciate that. Sure. So, you know, like any good presentation, I, have you ever seen Worst Cooks of America? Yes. Yeah. Oh, it's one of my favorite shows. <laughs> it's one, one of the favorite guilty pleasures. It really <laughs> is. And one of the fun parts about yeah. Worst Cooks is how often they have to call for their medic. <laughs> And so uh, Jan has been my medic, and I truly appreciate that. And so I'm just it's nice that your assistant there is familiar with that machine. <laughs> yeah, right. It is. And now I remember why I bought one. Yeah. So while Deb is working on those, we'll add the other ingredients. And so, as I said, Mrs. Rohr is telling us that we should add a quarter of a cup of sugar. So I'm going to measure and add that now. That's not a lot of sugar. 
No, it's not a lot of sugar. And so the question is, how sweet do you like your pie? Um, no, because you were saying it was savory back then, so I'm just thinking they still use them just a little right. bit of sugar. Well, Mrs. Aurora, like I said, is a dietitian, and she's looking oh, at okay. how much energy do you need. And very often, if you read some of the um, home manuals, it will talk about, now they're written towards women, and so these manuals will say, how active are you? If you are someone who is more active, then yes, more sugars, more um, sweeteners. If you're someone who is less active, I would leave that down, Deb. Oops, sorry. Yeah, I was just yeah. reversing it, but oh, okay. never mind. Yes. That's not gonna work. So we're gonna add a quarter cup of sugar today. And this is my half measure. So I'm just, I've already pre-measured it, I cheat. But my half measure. Okay. And so we'll add that. And this is the time where we begin to see standardization of recipes. Um, very often, a recipe that you would uh, inherit would say, oh, a spoon of this, a, table, a cup of that. Well, how big a spoon? Well, grandma's spoon is this size. How big a cup? Well, are we talking the teacup or are we talking the, the uh, drinking mug? I don't know. Mm -hmm. So this is, again, we're standardizing the recipes at this point in history. Yeah, they still teach that. We, we had to do that in cooking school. You know the difference. You know, most people get a coffee cup at home yep. mm -hmm. and think it's a cup. Right, then, right. Yeah, that's it's true. not a cup. Yeah, yeah, it's not a cup. A, a, cup. a coffee cup. A tea cup. <laughs> yeah, a coffee cup, a tea cup. This is actually a coffee cup. This is a coffee pitcher. Oh. So this one is for coffee rather than tea. And you can tell because it is tall. Coffee is always in a tall uh, pitcher, a tall pot. Mm -hmm. And that goes to um, the origins of coffee. Coffee is from the Middle East. And when it was adopted in the uh, 18, 1700s, 18, 1800s, it was adopted entirely, um, oh my goodness. No, nope, I didn't. All right, just waiting to see if I did or not. Wait a minute. Right. We need an insurance. Did you, did you take out insurance when you came yes. in? You're next. This is <laughs> And even today, when you are looking at the directions, um, how to make a cup of coffee, at that Maxwell House will say, so many scoops for six, six ounces. ounces. <laughs> for those of us that a coffee cup is roughly 12 to 16 ounces, right. no, we're about small. Mud people. Well, I have three of those in a day. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. Um, I had a, a, I once said to my doctor, she asked how many cups of coffee I had. I said, well, I got three. She said, how big is your mug? Uh, <laughs> she's uh, why I'm smart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And I, I was like, well, okay, you got me on that one. So, again, we're going back to that standardization. And this was the DNA of that. This is a standardized eight ounce and so aluminum. Yeah. Aluminum, this is again wow. one of the ones that Original. was able to find. <laughs> yeah, I need to go get this. Yes. Okay. What do you need? Okay. I'm ready. Can you take this yeah. stuff out of the oven? Yes. Okay. And then this again is the four ounce half cup. Okay. So I did a quarter of a cup of that. So you can probably imagine we're, we're supposed to be pretty close to two ounces. Mm -hmm. And again, that's all talking that standardization. And she also had us add two tablespoons of butter. Well, would you you cut the apples any back then? It didn't matter. They just cut them any size and put them in. Here. Well, um, that would all. She doesn't give us any direction on what size apples. Oh, okay. So I am going with. She just tells us fill it with sliced apples. Oh, mm -hmm. sliced. Okay. And the assistant is going with large slices. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, the assistant can do whatever she wants. <laughs> so, I'm going, to, I'm going to add our two tablespoons of butter. Oh, I don't know if this video is ever going to go online. <laughs> <laughs> this video may not be up there. Future Karen thinks she can't remember this. Yeah, that's <laughs> awkward. 
we, we definitely want to That was the almost trip. <laughs> I tripped on the dolly screen. Oh, sorry about that. Oh, my yeah, she's getting moved. <laughs> Aren't you glad you came today? <laughs> <laughs> Presbyterian family. Oh. So I'm sure Mixed marriage. That, yep. I'm <laughs> sure there was a wonderful conversation in the parlor at some point. Mm-hmm. So that was one tablespoon. And we're gonna go with another tablespoon. Right. They're generous tablespoons. They're generous tablespoons. Well, I could smush it all down into my yeah. yeah. Okay. So we're gonna add our tablespoon. As I said, this is a very professional operation today. <laughs> and uh, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about my cooking style or my cooking skills, ask that lady. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she ate the pies and you're still here, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, they need something to talk about this thing. <laughs> yeah. So we've added that. And she is also having us add are two tablespoons of water. And Jan is nice enough to bring us a bottle of water. And that's the part I like. I didn't think I would like dough when I, when I did a baking class too. And it was, like they say, you get used to the feel of it. Mm -hmm. And just that little two tablespoons mm -hmm. is gonna bring all of that flour together. Oh, yes. mm -hmm. oh God, it's beautiful. It, it's really, Two tablespoons. I do, I bake bread, and it is amazing what one tablespoon of water and what one tablespoon right, of bread yeah. will do for um, dough for two loaves, just how quickly it changes it. Mm -hmm. Wow. So we have our two tablespoons of water, and then she also suggests, if you like, a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon. So mm -hmm. that we should be like. I'm going to grab our cinnamon. I know they were working on the standardization of recipes for a long time because my mother learned how to bake from her mother-in-law, who my mother said was just, my grandmother was a wonderful baker. But she would do things like, you know, a pinch of this, and, right. oh, you know, yeah, a yeah. handful of that, mm -hmm. and a glub glub. <laughs> sure. Oh my goodness. Yeah. You know, when people ask me my, a recipe for soup or something I made, I'm like, well, you know, I've been doing it for 40 years, so I know mm -hmm. just how I do it. Right. That's all right. This is my good name. So you're going to use the peels, too? There are days where I do save the peels, and you can make an apple peel jelly. And it is wonderful. Oh, okay. Uh, today I'm not going to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe another program we will. Would you like them? Oh no. She, she was just telling us. <laughs> you, you to have them. She was just telling I'm us. I'm just wondering, you know, because I like bacon and cooking, yeah. and you know, well, you like I told you when she sprinkled the jello yeah, on. That's why I wondered. I, I think yeah. you have to use like the red jello. Okay. You know, the, and the sugar in the jello is sweet, mm -hmm. so it blends right with the apple. And so then you just eat them raw? Is Ooh, that it? Uh -huh. Yeah. Almost like candy. Right, right, right. Yeah. Because I had never seen the machine and the, and the thing. And she was like, oh, I brought it from, I know it wasn't Tully, it was another company that sells mm -hmm. stuff. Chef. Oh, oh no, yeah. Chef. Pan Pampered Pan Chef. Pampered 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 Chef. Yeah, Pampered Chef has all that fun stuff. Yeah, yeah. Pampered Chef. But a lot of the cooking place, cooking things have gone out of business, too. Mm-hmm. 
because there was one online place that I used to always love to go and it's not there anymore. Mm -hmm. Wow. So many people eat out. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's just amazing. I buy prepared frozen dinner kinds of things. Oh, yeah. Yeah, with working, it's just hard to find the time to do everything. Mm -hmm. I, am, I am very fortunate. Um, I work an hour off from my husband. He starts the day usually about 8 or 9, and he's done at uh, 4 or 5. I work 10 to 6. Aww. And so when I am done and I come downstairs, dinner. <laughs> he likes to cook, and so he will oh, either great. start a dinner or have dinner waiting when I come down. Wow. So mine's almost as good. Mine calls from the office and says, what do you want me to bring home? <laughs> <laughs> I like that, too. That's this two weeks where he's in Texas and Alabama is killing me. Oh, no. Ooh. I'm having to go pick up my own stuff. Oh, boy. Wow. But that's okay. I had some good mac and cheese, Asiago cheese macaroni yesterday. Oh my goodness. Mm, sounds it sounds good. good. Did you make it? No. Oh. Panera did. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Panera is a wonderful thing. Yeah. I haven't yes. been in there so long. Their food, to me, to, for me, is not enough. Yeah. Oh, you know? food, food like Even the like soup. Whole so. portion. Oh, I know. They're not enough for yeah. what they could pay for. Right. Yeah. That's not right. 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 Like, I have two bowls of this mm -hmm. soup. Thank you. So, Deb has prepared our apples for us, and that is a wonderful thing. So we're just going to mix these up, mix our water, mix our sugar, mix our apples, get everything coated as well as we can. Pardon me. Get everything coated as well as we can, and kind of break up that butter a little bit. This room is cold, so the butter is still kind of hard. Um, the house is warmed for part of the week. So we have a... I was just going to say, I'm sitting right here. Where's the fire? <laughs> oh, I, would, I would love to have a fire going in there. And every room in this house has a have fireplace. Have a fireplace, yeah. Has a fireplace. That was the heating so of the time. This house is what, 18? 1820. Ooh. Yeah. Parts of it are 1820. The yeah. main part, this, this room and the next one will be 1820. The, the addition, when did he do the 1850s? Yeah. Yeah. So the, wow, 20. So we will. We're getting close to 200 years. Yes, we are. We are close to 200 years. I remember years. when I moved to Odenton. Is that the red house from over there? No? These what belong here? For over there? They've been here since the 1990s. Yeah, because I'm not moving in Odenton. They picked the house up. I'm like, oh, the house is going down the street. Oh, I remember that when they did the house. They did the street. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, this is from the Cromwell Farm, which was down that way. Oh, okay. So we just put them in. Now, some women yeah, and some men yeah, take yeah. pride in how lovely they can put layer their yeah. apple slices into their pie. The rest of us are just pleased to have apple slices in the pie yeah, shell today. <laughs> Make sure we get all that yummy. Pour that over our apples. Oh yeah, we got all the juices. And see, one of the reasons why we put the sugar in early is sugar draws the liquid out of the apples. And then it mixes with that liquid, creating that lovely syrup that we have in so many of our delicious apple treats. And so now our pie is going to need the top crust. So that you can see it. I can smell it all the way over here. Um, <laughs> so let's open up our second one. And, the, and that crust was carefully rolled out this morning, right? Yes. It was. And vacuum sealed. And vacuum sealed. <laughs> For safety. Not mine. <laughs> you know, I have special boxes, too, that I put all my big in. Oh, yes. Yes. And they're colorfully labeled. <laughs> You've got the boxes that say Duncan Hines. You've got the boxes that say Betty Walker. Yeah, my cousin, Mrs. Smith. <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. We're going to roll this out. Now, one of the things I'm going to do once we get this rolled out is I'm going to cut a little figure out of the center. 
we want to put slits or holes or cut out uh, or do a cutout to allow the steam to escape from the pie. Otherwise, it will rise the crust, raise it up rather than rise like bread, and can break the crust. Plus, it gives, it, gives the fruit somewhere to expand to. Pardon <coughs> me. God bless you. For today, we have my little apple. Oh, you apple. can just use a cookie cutter. I love and using cookie great cutters. Great I love using yeah. the cookie cutter for it. We're just going to put that in there, loosen it up, pull out our little cutter thing for a moment. Take a picture. I'm just pressing the dough down. I will use my fork and trim it in just a moment. But I just want to press it down so that I don't have it sliding around as I'm working. And then that little cutout we did, because it's a big okay. hole right now, mm -hmm. we're just going to move that little cutout and put it right on the side. It takes our hole smaller and gives us a lovely look. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Stuff is the one that we all like to do. I'm just going to trim this and I take my knife and I just follow the edge of my pie cut my pie pan all the way around. Trim her up. Avoid all fingers. I highly recommend it. <laughs> If you would like me to bake a pie for Thanksgiving, please get your orders in now. <laughs> and then we will just take our, our fork. You can do all sorts of things. You can do a fluted edge, you can do a roller. I like the simple. I'm just going to use my fork and press that seal. basics of making a very simple apple pie. And we like to say that something is as American as apple pie. Completely forgetting that apples are from Europe. <laughs> North America did not have apples until Europeans arrived and brought them with. Because apples are good food and apples make apple cider. When we say <laughs> apple cider, we think, oh sweet cider, it's fall, we'll make cider donuts. No, no, no. Our, your, our um, early uh, colonialists, they were making hard cider because that lasts a lot longer than sweet cider. Sweet cider becomes hard cider. And so the first apple orchards were for drinking. And then after that, someone said, hmm, pie sounds good. <laughs> so we have our pie. Yeah. 